God said this morning. I wrote it down. I wrote it down because the Lord just kept talking to me and I just started writing. So the people don't know what they need. Living unholy and unrighteous. The devil today is bombarding our minds with so many unholy and unrighteous thoughts. Every idle moment that you have, you are battling unholy and unrighteous thoughts. It, it may not be perverted thoughts. Or they're just thoughts that are not from the Lord. Anything that's not from God is unholy and, un, and, un, and unrighteous. And it's all leading, it's all leading to something worse. It's leading to destruction. It says our minds are bombarded with things that that uh, the devil used uh, his craftiness and it's designed as a distraction uh, from the things of God. The people of God are distracted, are so distracted. And the, and the thing about it, during the time of, 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 of the, the children of Israel, they knew that they were distracted. They, they, they knew that they were distracted. The problem today is we don't realize we, 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 we are not even aware that we're distracted. We just think it's life. We just think life is just happening. We have not, we, we have not even uh, been alerted in our spirits that there's something wrong. That there's something going on that is demonic, that is unrighteous, it's unholy. It's a distraction. It says most of us are not aware of the tricks and the things. So you cannot depend on the people. God said you can't depend on the people because they don't know what to pray for. You cannot depend on the people. Because I wondered, see, earlier this year, one of the first books I've read was a book uh, with 600 pages. It was E.M. Bounds on prayer. First book I read, I read it in 1999. I started reading it in 1998. I finished reading it in 1999. August of 1998, I read it. In August of 1999, I finished it. And the reason I can remember that, because I wrote, I don't even have the book right now, but I wrote in that book, it was the first book in my whole life that I read a book from cover to cover. And it took me one year to read that 600-page book. Shouldn't have took me that long, but it took me that long to do it. And it was Ian Bounds on prayer. It was as I was entering into ministry, and so this year, God told me, he said, get that book and read it again. He said, get that book and read it again. And I didn't get it. I did not get it. I just kind of, you know, put it off, put it off, put it off. And then Brother Willie White invited me on October 2nd to do the invocation at a at a, at a at a function that, that the um, community health centers were having. And I was on schedule to, 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 do, to do it at 8 o'clock that morning or 8.30 that morning. And unbeknownst to him and I, they had changed the schedule to 8, 8 o'clock that morning. So when I got there at 8 o'clock, they had already done the invocation. And so they didn't need me to do the invocation. And, and, and the, the coordinator of the program, she was apologetic. I was good because I had to get on the road to go out of town that morning anyway. It was no big deal. But she said, but we got a gift for you. And don't leave because you're going to love this gift. Brother Willie's a witness to this. And so I waited around and me and Brother Willie talked a little bit. And this lady walks up and she gives me a gift. And I take the gift and I put it in the back seat of my car. And I go to, uh, I had to go to Derrida that day. I go to Derrida. I come back home and I say, oh, that's a gift. I wonder what they put in there. So I take it and I open it up and it's E.M. Bounds. It, it, listen, listen. God said, I told you to go get that book. And you didn't go get it. So I brought it to you. I brought it to you. And I called Brother Willie and I told him, I said, man, God had told me to go get that book. And I knew that there was something in that book that the Spirit of the Lord wanted me to read and, 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 and bring back to memory. And so I've been hunting for it. I've been reading it. I've been, I've been in that book. I've been reading it. And, and, and the Lord revealed to me 
the path of Hezekiah and the path of, of Israel and also the path of Nehemiah. And he showed me those three lessons. And I, everything that I read stood out, but this stood out more. And those three, those three men, those three prophets, were, were, were instrumental in praying for the people. When the people had turned away from God, when the nations had turned away from God, when the enemies of, of the Lord were up on these people, they were instrumental in doing. Hezekiah, he was not, he didn't have a saved father. He didn't have a father that believed God. He didn't have a father that lived holy. He didn't have a grandfather that lived holy. But Hezekiah did. And he was a king that prayed for God, that prayed for the people of God. And he prayed and he prayed and he prayed. When he saw the people turning away, he prayed and the people would come back and God would protect the people. And, and, and Hezekiah even got sick at one point. And when he got sick, can I get on this mic here? When he got sick, he, um, he turned this, you know, the prophet Isaiah came to him and said, hey, get your, get your, get your house in order. Because, you know, you, 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 you're going to die. Although he had been faithful to God and although he had done so much for God, for the kingdom of God, God was, the, the, the prophet told him that. But Hezekiah believed God so much that he turned his face to the wall and he prayed to God and he reminded God, he reminded God how he had, how he had helped the kingdom of God and how he had helped the people of God. And God honored that and gave him 15 years. The prophet came and told him one thing. God told the prophet something else. He came back and Isaiah said, God going to give you 15 more years. And it was all because Hezekiah had prayed for the people. Because the people didn't know. The people, the people had an ideal. They had turned away from God. Some of us don't even know we've turned away from God. Some of you stand, uh, sitting here, you have no idea how great the attack is on your life. You, you, you know things are out of order, and you know you're out of order with God, but you haven't identified the attack. You haven't identified the adversary is attacking you. And if it's attacking you, he will eventually attack your children. He will eventually attack your body. He will eventually attack your mind. See, I know the attacks on my life this year has not been because I've not been following God. But it's been because I have been following God. It's been, it's been because, because the devil has tried to silence me, has tried to discourage me, has tried to make me look and say, well, why is, it, why is this happening to me? But it's because the Lord has allowed me, has allowed me to experience what the adversary is planning to do to you. And what he's desiring to do to you. Israel, same situation. The people turned from God and was, was doing things their own way. I'm talking to you this morning. They turned from God and they were doing things their own way, living their own way, living unholy, living unrighteous. God told them, say, don't marry, un don't marry women or men that, that are not in the kingdom. Don't socialize with them. God said, do not socialize with them. Don't build relationships with them. He said, don't even do business with them. And them people did the opposite of what God said. They built relationships with unholy and unrighteous people. And they, and they, they had social relationships and business relationships with all of these unholy and unrighteous people. And when Israel got there, he didn't know what to do. But he knew what Hezekiah had done. And what he did is exactly what Hezekiah did. He, he, he began to fast and he began to pray. He began to call on the God of his salvation. He began to cry out to God, not for himself, not for his house, not for a car, not for finances, not for the health of his body, but he began to cry out to God for the souls of the people. Of the souls of the people. 
And I mean, he wept. He wept for the people. He wept for the people. Because, he, because God needed somebody that would weep for the people. That would, that would cry out for the people. He, he wasn't talking about a, a prayer line laying hands on people that were sick. It was deeper than that. He, he, wasn't, he wasn't talking about, you know, blessings are coming and the favor of God is coming. It was much deeper than that. The people were, were, were being lost. The people were falling away. And, 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 the, and the people that were falling away, their children were falling away. Their families were falling away. They were, they were, they were leaving God. And we're seeing today that people are leaving God. People that were raised in church, that, that had a relationship with God, that had salvation, and they had salvation, believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The Bible says you shall be saved. They received salvation, but they never got delivered. They were never delivered. They were never set free. They, were, they received Jesus, but they continued to live the life that they were living prior to receiving Jesus. Which means they didn't, they didn't have any deliverance. They didn't receive deliverance. They didn't, they didn't, they, they continued to do everything they were doing. And they believed that Jesus Christ, some of you here believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins. But you hadn't been delivered. The problem with that is you don't want to be delivered. I'm telling you what the word of God, what, what the Lord said to me this morning. You don't desire deliverance. You desire the flesh and the, and the appetite of the flesh. And the only reason, and it's, it's, it's our fault as well, is because, you know, like I'm convicted. I'm very convicted. I repented this morning because I know that I haven't been praying for you like Israel, like Hezekiah, like Nehemiah. And it ain't all on me, but I got a role in it too. That the, that, the, that, that, the, that the leader is supposed to be crying out for the souls of the people. Amen. Because we see it. I see it, man. I see the sword. I see, I see it upon the land. I, I'm not blind to it. You might be blind to it, but I am not blind to what the devil is doing and what he is planning to do in your life. I'm not, I'm, I'm not blind to how he's deceiving your mind and how the blinders are on your mind. You know why? Because they were once on my mind. They were once on my mind. My, my, I was saved and yet not delivered. Saved yet living unholy, unrighteous. I'm not talking about as a kid. I'm talking about as a minister. I'm talking about as a preacher. I'm talking about as a pastor. I was once lost. My mind was yet still blind. I had to be delivered. I had to desire deliverance. I had to hate what God hates. And love what God hates. Love what God loves. I'm not going to beat you up and say that, say that, hey, you're looking at a person who's been living holy. No. I, but I desire holiness. I desire to be righteous. I desire to live a life that God, that was pleasing to God. It's greater. The attack is greater today, y'all, than what Hezekiah or Israel or Nehemiah even experienced. Oh, it's greater. It's deeper. It's deeper. It's de the Israel and them can't touch. I mean, what they what, what they what they what they experience in comparison to what we experience is greater. See, the devil started off as a little serpent in the Garden of Eden in Genesis. By the time he got the revelations, he was a full-blown dragon. And the Bible says in Genesis, the Lord told him that you will eat the dust of the earth. The dust of the earth is the exact same place man was made from. And so the objective of the adversary is to eat all of us and to gain all of us to be the host, to be his host where he can use our bodies to host him. 
And he's constantly gaining power, constantly gaining strength because he's got so much of the world. He's got so much, he's got all of the world, but he's got so, he's got so much, so many of the believers. So many of us. Hallelujah. Praise God. So don't think that everybody can understand or receive what I've given you. So they can't. Even the things that you say, they will fight them in their thoughts. So people love what they are about. They love the vanity. They love the pride of life. And the learned results as and the results are as fake and are fake and phony. And they but they, but they love the results. God, the Lord said, even though the results are fake and funny, fake and phony that the believers still love the results. We love the results of pride. We love the results of, of, um, of vanity. We love it. Although we know it's fake, although we know it's phony, we still love it. We still love the attention that the world gets. We still love the the, you know, because that's what it's all about today is how many likes can I get? How many people will like me? How many heads can I turn? It's all, it's all, it's all the plan of the adversary. It's all the plan of the adversary. Nehemiah showed us that we can rebuild our walls. Nehemiah revealed to us that we can rebuild the walls. Jerusalem is still a place today that the Lord has, has told us to pray for, to pray for Jerusalem because Jerusalem is God's place. And the Jews are God's people. And we are God's people. And so here it is in this passage of, 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 of Scripture. Nehemiah, is, is, is a, he's a cupbearer for a king. And he runs into some men from Jerusalem. And he gets in a conversation with them. He says, hey, how, how, how are things going there? And they say, oh, it's bad. He, 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 they tell Nehemiah, they said, the walls are in ruin. So the walls are torn down. The walls around the city is torn down. And when they told Nehemiah this, man, his heart was broken. Because Nehemiah knew that at some point and some time that if the walls of your city are torn down, the enemy has easy access to the temple. The enemy had easy access to the temple in Jerusalem where God is worshipped, where God is praised, where God dwells back then. And if the walls are down, there's nothing to stop the enemy from attacking the temple. You have a relationship with Jesus. You believe that Jesus is the Son of God. You've accepted that truth into your heart. And the redemptive work of Jesus Christ has cleansed you from all unrighteousness. And he says that your body is now the temple of the Holy Spirit. But there are walls around that temple. Each one of us have walls around the temple that, we do, that dwell in us. And those walls are, are shored up with the faith that we have in God. They're shored up with the righteousness that we have being in Christ Jesus. They're, they're shored up with the obedience and the prayers that we have as righteous people. If we are not praying, if we're not walking in faith, 
If we're not living obedient lives, our walls are in ruin. And our temple is vulnerable. If our temple is vulnerable, then everything that the temple represents is at risk. Why do we not see the hand of God move according to the word of God? Why, do, why, why don't we see God do what he uh, used to do? Why, do, why does it look like believers? Why does believers look like the world? Because we've interacted with the world. And we've taken the influence of the world. And God today is wanting us to rebuild our walls. Amen. He wanted us to rebuild our walls. <laughs> Last Sunday evening, thank y'all for coming to uh, Elizabeth Baptist Church. But I taught a story, a teach, a spoke on Isaiah and Uzziah, King Uzziah. Uzziah was a great king, another great king of Israel, and he he did so many wonderful things. He built such a wonderful army. He protected that nation. He, he was, he, everybody in that nation was prosperous because of him. I mean, he was amazing. He's an amazing king. And Isaiah, the prophet, major prophet, he loved King Uzziah. And he, and he gave King Uzziah all the credit for everything that King Uzziah had done. Everything that was happening in that nation, he, he was like, man, that's because of King Uzziah. But King Uzziah got prideful, and he died. He got prideful, and one day he went into the temple, and he was offering incense up to God as a king. That's not the role of a king. It's the role of a priest. And it's very clear that kings don't do that. But Isaiah had got beside himself, and he was going to offer incense up to God. And the priest walked in and said, King Uzziah, what are you doing? And he continued to do They said, you're, you're not to do that. And King Uzziah, in his pride, kept doing it. And at that very moment, God struck him with leprosy. At the very moment, his skin became leprous. And it put him out of the temple. And now his son is kind of taking orders from him. But he's on the outskirts of the temple because he's got, he's got leprosy. And he eventually dies. He's a, he's a, he was a good king, but he was living. But he decided that, you know, he got so big that, that pride just led him down the wrong path. And God dealt with him on the spot. I, I'm saying that because don't you think for a minute that God will be merciful to you? Don't you think for a minute that you can do stuff or we can do things that God say don't do and that because he didn't do something the last time, that this time, you know, he, you won't see the wrath of God. At any time, God is merciful because he chooses to be. He is not merciful because we deserve it. He's not merciful because we've earned it. He is merciful because he is God, and he chooses to be merciful. Why has he not handled me like he handled Uzziah? Why has he not handled you like he handled Uzziah? His choice. His choice. He can do it. So don't you, Uzziah didn't fear him. And at that very moment, he didn't reference him. If you don't fear God and you don't reference God, don't you think for a minute that the mercy of God cannot change for you. Don't, don't, don't be deceived. For God is not mocked. Don't be deceived that God won't do it.
because he's a because you've read in here he's a merciful God. He is the same as he was yesterday. He can do whatever he want to do it, whenever he wants to do it, however he wants to do it. He can do it. But to us, he has been merciful. Nehemiah, Nehemiah 1, 3 and 4. And they said to me, the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. And the wall of Jerusalem is also broken down and its gates are burnt with fire. So it was, this Nehemiah, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. He said, I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Here, here, here Nehemiah, and this, this, is where, this is where our hearts have got to be. This is where my heart is for, this, for the body of believers here. And not just the body of believers here, but this is where my heart is for the nation of God, for the kingdom of God. That if, if, if you are living unholy and unrighteous, your walls are burnt down. If you are, if, 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 if everything goes, you, you, you believe Jesus Christ, but you haven't given, you haven't, you haven't, you're, you're, you're not living holy, you're not living righteous, your walls have been destroyed. Your walls are in ruin. You are, you are vulnerable, vulnerable for an attack. You have no outer walls to protect you. You have nothing in place to save you. Are your children, are your family, if you don't have any walls, and, and Nehemiah knew this. Nehemiah knew it. And Nehemiah began to pray and he began to fast. And let me tell you something. It is exactly what we have to do. Thank you, Minister Kathy, for that amen. It's exactly what we have to do. We have to pray. You got to pray for your family. You ain't got to pray for my family if you don't want to, but at least pray for your own family. You ain't got to pray for nobody in this church if, you, if you're not led to, because I know God going to lead you to. But if you can only do for your family, at least pray for your children. At least pray for your own family. You don't have to love nobody else. Although he says, love your neighbor as yourself. You, you, you should do that. But if you can't, if you're not there yet, at least start repairing your own walls. Be, be like Nehemiah and begin to pray because that devil, that demon, that unclean spirit is coming. Coming after your children. Coming after your family. Coming after your health. Coming after your mind. Coming. And somebody can say, he already here. He's not waiting. We listen. There is no. There is there. The, the falling away. There. Listen. There are people that are that have fallen away from the Lord in big numbers. There are people that once was attending a worship service. They're no longer doing that. They they were once praying and worshiping God. They are no longer doing that. They're, they're no longer doing People that you know, people that I know, people have turned away from God. And they are not only, they've not only turned away from an organized assembly, they've turned away from God. They, they have said in their heart, as fools, there is no God. They have said that in their heart. The Bible says, the Bible says, any man that says it in their heart, the fool, they have said in their heart, there is no God. God. They have said in their hearts, they, they have come to the conclu conclusion, they don't need God because there is no God. 
There, there is no Jesus. That story is not true. The resurrection didn't happen. They have come, they, 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 they have turned away. I'm talking, I'm not talking about atheists. I'm not talking about uh, agnostics. I'm talking about people that have come, that, that, that were once attending and once worshiping and once preaching and once ministering. They have come to realize, I don't want to do that no more. They've turned away from the Lord. And those same people are friends of ours. People that we socialize with. People that we know. And because their walls have been torn down, it is easy for them to tear your walls down. Because if you don't know, the Bible says that, 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 that we are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And so if you don't know enough to even stand, uh, to even defend your faith, then they can say anything to you and you have to ponder it. Think about it. That kind of makes sense. It kind of makes sense that, that there was a big bang. It kind of makes sense that, 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 that Jesus didn't, didn't do this and didn't do that because we don't see Jesus doing anything now. So it, it makes sense that, that all of that is just a fairy tale. I heard a girl say that one day that I thought that was all a fairy tale. I thought it was just like Mary had a little lamb, little red riding hood, that the story of Jesus was just made up. That's what she believed. She believed that. She believed that. And so, and so the, 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 the Nehemiah had heard what was happening. He had heard what was going on, just like you and I hear what's going on in some of our family members' life. And we just, we just say, hey, you know, man, they just got it. They're just going through or such and such just having trouble or whatever the case may be. No, they're walls. They once was following God. They were raised to know Jesus Christ. They were brought up to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. But now they don't believe it. Now they don't believe that. Now they got a, a whole different truth. And they turned away from God. And it's, it, it, is a, it is an epidemic, and it is, a, it is it's growing to be a pandemic. It's, 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 it's growing. I mean, I can't remember. It's an epidemic or pandemic, which is the greatest. But it's getting, it's getting to be so, so bad that, that it's affecting, it is affecting, it is affecting the body of believers. It's affecting the body of believers. My Lord. My Lord. And we, we have got to have a heart like Hezekiah, a heart like Israel, a heart like Nehemiah. The heart of Nehemiah and the heart like Israel and the heart like Hezekiah was just caring, just being concerned, concerned enough to fast and concerned enough to pray. Hallelujah. Concerned enough to be concerned. Praise God. I see my grandchildren over there, man. I pray for them every single day. I pray for all of my grandchildren by name every single day. Every day. And this morning, the Lord said, pray for, and I pray for you. I pray for you every day. But the Lord said this morning, don't just pray for your grandchildren. And don't just pray for abounding grace. But pray for the falling away. It's bigger than abounding grace. It's bigger than the Hollins family. It's bigger than your family. The church, the, the people are turning away from God. And the destruction is coming towards the temple. It's coming towards your heart. It's coming towards what you believe. It's coming towards your faith. I'm just talking to you this morning. Proverbs 25, 28 says, whoever has no rule over his own spirit, whoever has no rule, no authority, no power, no obedience, whoever 
has no obedience or rule over its own spirit. It's like a city broken down. Wow. Whoever can't control, whoever can't govern, whoever can't align their life to the word of God, it's like a city broken down without walls. That's the word of God. Whoever, whoever say I'm a believer, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, I believe that Jesus died for my sins, I believe that Jesus rose with all power in heaven and in earth but has no rule over their life. It's like a city whose walls are broken down. What happens to a city that has no rules, that have no obedience? What happens to a, a city that's just, that's just, I mean, just lawless? It has no walls. You have no rules. You have no, the word of God is not your God. You have no walls. A city without walls. Man, easy prey. Easy prey for the enemy. Easy, for, easy to be defeated. Will be defeated. Easy to be destroyed. Will be destroyed. Hallelujah. Whoever has no rules, whoever has no obedience, whoever is not following the word of God, whoever is not being led by the word of God, whoever is not trusting the word of God over his own spirit, that's a lowercase spirit. Because you don't have to control the uppercase you have to just control the flesh. You have to just control the mind. You can't do it without praying, church. You can't do it without without seeking the Lord. You can't you can't you can't you, you can't do it without crying out to God. Prayer. Prayer is a weapon for every stronghold. Prayer is a weapon for every stronghold. Prayer is, the, is a weapon, is your weapon that God has given you for every stronghold. Prayer, prayer is a weapon for every stronghold. How much are you praying? How much are you praying? How much, when, how often are you praying? How often are you, are you using that weapon? None of the other weapons will work. None of the other weapons will work. Worshiping God is a weapon. If you, you can't, People don't just worship God and not pray. People who worship God pray. And people who pray worship God. I, I'm, I'm not talking about you driving to work with Kurt Franklin in, in, in your car. Nobody in here ought to be driving with Kurt Franklin in their car. Because we don't know what's going on with him. Matter of fact, we do know what's going on with him. But 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 that's not that's not that's that see see that is that that is how uh, false prophets are able to step in yeah, yeah, yeah. when your walls are down. Because somebody sitting there saying, "What's wrong with Kurt Franklin?" Because you don't know that there's that 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 behavior. Yeah does not align with this word. Does not align. And it's not, 
It's not just where I'm doing something. When you worship from your lips, when you praise him from your lips, you will pray. I'm not talking about listening to any worship music. Do that. That's good. But do it after you worship him yourself. Be led on, 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 be led on what to do and, and, and what to listen to. And, and if, if you're in the Word, you will always listen to the right stuff. If you're in the Word, you're, gonna, you, you're not going to have a question about what to listen to and who to listen to and who to be around. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna know because this Word, this word is the building blocks for your wall. This, this Word, it's a concrete for your walls. It's just the material that builds your walls up. Amen. Amen. It builds the walls. And when the walls are built up, when the walls are built up, it keeps the it keeps the the, 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 the the pestilence out. It keeps the trouble out. It keeps it keeps worry out. It keeps I mean, you know, right now you don't have time to think because things are attacking your temple. The walls at least give you a chance to think. Give you a chance to pray. The walls allow you to see things that are coming before they actually get to you. The walls give you discernment. Amen. The walls give, give, you, give you wisdom. The walls. But, but whoever has no, no rule over his own spirit. I mean, if your spirit is, is leading you and guiding you and directing you and you're following your spirit, you're following your unrighteousness you're following just what but my spirit i'm just doing whatever then then um your walls you're without walls nobody has to tell you nobody has to reveal to you the holy spirit the holy spirit reveals to us what is right and what is wrong amen amen the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit shines the light on what is right and what is wrong. Amen. And we, and we, and because of our love for God, how many of you love God in here this morning? And isn't it something, wouldn't it be nice if we said, the Bible says, those who raise their hand loves me. But it don't. He said, if you what? Love me. You're going to keep my commandments. If you love me, you're going to keep my word. That's the, that's the sign of our love is that, is that we desire to keep the word of God. Amen. How many of you desire to keep the word of God? Amen. Desire to follow the word of God. Desire to be led by the word of God. Because we're children of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even so, so, so when, when Israel, when Israel prayed for those people, Israel didn't know what to do. And when Israel laid down and he began to fast and pray for the people, I'm telling you, he began to tear his clothes off. He began to pull hair out of his head. He was so vexed. He was so hurt that the people had turned from God that he was just, oh, he just didn't know what to do. And he began to pray. And the people came out of those relationships they were in. They came, marriages broke up. Divorces took place because those people had yoked themselves up with unbelievers. You yoked up with unbelievers, you're looking for trouble. Matter of fact, you're going to get it too. You're going to get trouble. You're going to get way, 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 way more than you anticipated. You're going to go way further than you thought. Whoever has no rule, if you don't have any rule over your own spirit, it's is like a city broken down. Man, you ever went into a city that's, that's broken down? You ever went into a place that's just broken down? I mean just broken down. Looks, I mean, looks like it's deserted. No, no life. It, no, you know, buildings are just, windows are broken. It just, it's just a broken down place. 
It has nothing. I know y'all say that look like our city, right? But it's, a, it's broken down. And that's how we are in the sight of God. We are like a city that's broken down. When, when, when he is not the authority in our life, when we are not following the will and the plan of God, when our walls are broken down, to God, we look like a broken city. Nehemiah, he prayed, and when he prayed, the favor of the Lord came upon him. When he prayed, even the king who he was working for gave him favor. The king that he was an, a cupbearer for let him off for four months to go back to his city to build it up. He got material. He got everything that he needed. He got the help that he needed. He got the people that he needed. He also had people that came to still try to tear him down, still try to get him off of that wall. But he wasn't deceived. He stayed there and he rebuilt the wall of that city, of Jerusalem. He, and, 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 it, and it all happened. It all happened when he prayed. See, sometimes we, we, we know there's something that needs to be done. We know we need to be done. We, knew, we know we need to do something. We know things are out of order in our home, in our life. We, we, we just don't know how to get them back in order. And so we really try to get them back in order. We, we have really good intentions. We try to make it work. But the only thing that can make it work is prayer. It, it, we, we can't do it. You can't do it. I can't. We can't turn it around. You can't fix it. You can't fix family members. You can't fix your children. You cannot fix your finances. You cannot fix the things in your life that's out of order, decisions that you've made. Those people that had yoked up and had businesses with, with people that were unsaved and relationships and marriages, it only happened. I, Israel could have talked to them, but they weren't moving. It was when they began to pray. And when, when he began to pray, God began to move. God begins to move. So we first, we first have to have a heart. Our heart has to be a heart that, that I want my life to align with the will of God, to the will of God. Come on, come on, say, I want my life to align to God's will. Come on, say it again. I want my life to align to God's will. That's the first thing we have to, that, that's the first thing that we have to desire in our hearts that our life aligns to the will of God. I can't worry about my children. I cannot worry about my wife. I cannot worry about this church. I want my life to align to God's will. I, I, I want it, and I cannot make it align on my own. I first got to have that desire and, and now that I have that desire, I have got to pray. And guess what? God wants my life to align. So he is not pushing against me. He is not coming against you. God wants your life to align according to his will. And so now that I've come to myself, now that I'm taking authority over my own rules of my spirit, then I go to God and I say, Lord, I want my life to align to your will. Help me, Lord. We pray. We pray to God. Amen. Israel and Hezekiah cried out to God. Man, it ain't just going there and praying. It's not just going there and talking. God wants to know that you want it. He want to know do you want, how how you want it 
How much do you want it? How much do you want this life? You know, the reason we want it is because we can, do, we can see the results even before we get there. The results of how life is going to be even before you get there. Amen. Amen. Tired of struggling. Tired of worrying. Tired of living this old wretched life. Amen. Tired of walking in darkness. Tired of the same old, same old going around in circles. Amen. Tired of it. And, you, and, and when you're tired of it, you got to cry out to God. If any of us had a, a, a child in the hospital sick to death, man, we would be crying out to God. We would be weeping to God. Our hearts would be broken because we want that child healed. We want that child set free. We want, we, we, we want, we want that child to live their life. Am I right about it? No one would have to say, baby, you got to cry out for him. You would be crying. No one would have to say, you got to fast because that child's laying up there. That child's not eating. You can't just go to the cafeteria and eat. You'd be like, I don't want anything to eat. I can't eat right now. I'm heavy. My child is sick. Child is sick to death. And only the doctor said that they've done everything they can do. I got to go to God in prayer. And I got to be like Nehemiah. I got to get other people that can help me. And Nehemiah got other people that can help him. And he prayed and God gave him favor. And that's the way we can't be like, oh, you know, I'm just going to pray. No, I got to want it so. I got to want it so much. But it, why, why do I want it? Because it's what God wants. This is what God wants for my life. This is what God wants. God is my father. God is my creator. God is my Lord. I don't want to live contrary to his will. I don't want to not please him. I don't want his people. He, he, he has done too much for us. He has done way too much for us. He is our rock. Amen. He is our healer. He is our deliverer. What would we do without him? How would we live right now without him? None of us would say, well, I'm just going to live my life till I die. Once you know him, how can you live without him? Once you know him, how can you make it without him? You can't. So you got to kind of like, I gotta, you got to figure out, man, I, I want my family so bad. I'm, I'm willing to cry out for them, and I'm going to cry for my family. I'm going to weep for my family. I'm going to weep. It's something I really want. I really want this. I really want this. Some of us have had been in relationships, and that relationship didn't work out, and your heart was broke. Remember that feeling? Remember that feeling when she left? Remember that feeling when he left? And you couldn't do nothing. You were heartbroken. I mean, you were torn up. You felt that feeling. Have you ever felt that same feeling for the Lord? Have you ever felt that hungry for the blessings of the Lord and for the favor of God and for God to do something like, I need God to do this. God, I need you to do this. I need you to do this. This is not about my business. This is not about the health of my body. This is not about the health of my mind. God, I need you to I need you to build walls in my family over my children. I need you to build, I need to rebuild the walls, Lord. I need to rebuild the walls in my life. Come on, stand up with me. Hallelujah. How do you go back and just do nothing after this? How you just, if you do nothing, if you do nothing, then you have to, 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 you have to question yourself. If you do nothing, you have to say, 
It's better than I thought. It's, it's worse than I thought. I've heard the truth of God's word this morning. And my walls, my walls are in ruin. My walls are in ruin. And I'm, a, and I'm under attack. I'm under attack. And the walls around those cities back in those days were so tall and they were so thick that on some of those walls, they could put a whole army on those walls. And they could see from, from a long way, you could see a long way off, when no enemy just going to creep up on them. Because you had, to, you had to get through the wall before you got to the, to the people, before you got to the temple, before you got to the goods. You, you, had, to, you had to go through the wall. So if your wall is not built up, you may be flying high today. You may have it all going your way. But at some point, at some point, see, the Bible said we wrestle not against flesh and blood. See, it ain't a, it ain't a flesh and blood thing that's going to come at you. The Lord loves you so much that whatever he got to do to get your attention, he will do it. And you may be flying high. Things may be looking good. Everything working out. Got the mate you want. You got the job you want. Got the car you want. Got the house you want. Got money in the bank. You know, things just looking up. change overnight yes. things can change overnight y'all things can turn can turn in seconds in seconds in seconds so Emma took her, took her dog to the to the groomer. She didn't walk out of the house expecting to be pent against a wall by a car. She didn't expect to lose her leg. Things change. Things happen. Praise God. God, her walls were already built up. And if her walls weren't already up, she would have left God. She would have been mad at the Lord. Not praised him, not, not glorified him, been asking, why me, Lord, why me? But just the opposite. Because she had walls built up. She kept worshiping him. She kept praying. She kept praising him. Even in the midst of them picking her up and loading her up, she's still praying. You know why? Because her walls were already built. People have lost loved ones, lost their children, lost their spouse, and they've turned away from God. They say, I don't believe God anymore. I don't know why he would have taken my child. I don't know why he would have done this or why he would have done that. It's because the walls, the walls wouldn't build up. 
So when your walls are built up, your response and your reaction is different. Hallelujah. Give us the spirit of Israel. Give us the spirit of Hezekiah. Give us the spirit of Nehemiah, Lord. God, put in our hearts what was in their hearts. That, Father, we, that we would pray for the people, Lord. God, that our hearts would be for those that have turned away and those who are vulnerable, those who have no walls built up, those who have no rule over their own spirit, those who lives are like cities that are broken and torn down. God, we pray in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for the body of believers. We pray, dear God, for their eyes to be open, their hearts to be open to you. We pray that the blinders on their mind by the world and the things of the world, God, that those blinders would be, be, would be removed. And we pray, God, that there would be a hunger and a thirst in their hearts for you, Lord. God, let their hearts be turned to you, dear God. Let them cry to you, Lord. Let them seek you, God. We pray, God, that every that every everything, God, that 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 has them blind right now, God, vanity, every, everything, God, that, that, that makes them, God, prideful, God, that you would remove it in the name of Jesus. God, we know that you have been merciful to us all because you are a merciful God and your mercy endures forever, Lord. God, we know that you can do whatever you want to do, whenever you want to do it, however you want to do it. And God, we, we, we are we are, we are we're humble to that, dear God. We're humble because of it, dear God. And we honor you because of it. But God, give us, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help the body of believers in this ministry. Help the body of believers abroad, dear God. Help us, oh God. Help us, Lord, not to turn away from you, Lord. God, we need your help, God. God, we need your guidance, Lord. Our minds are so crowded, dear God. Let the mind of Christ be in us, oh God. Let those thoughts that we have, dear God, let them be cast down, God. In the name of Jesus. God, those things that are wrong and out of order in our life, dear God. God, you turn them around. Let us give you permission to turn them around. Let us, let us release them to you, dear God, that you will turn them around, that you will destroy relationships, that... God, that we are not supposed to be in, that you would take us out of social relationships and business relationships that we're not supposed to be in, God. Anything, Father, that we have connected ourselves to, Father, that, that is not bringing you glory, Father, we need your help in re dissolving it, God, removing it, Father. You know how to do it. We don't know how to do it. We, we need you to do it, dear God. And we need your strength, dear God, to help us to come out, God, to come out of those things in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, let every soul that has heard your word, every ear that has heard your word this morning, dear God, God, let them examine the walls, dear God, that they have up. Let them measure those walls by how they live and, and, and if they're righteous in their living, if they're obedient in their living, if they're prayerful, Lord, if they're one with you, God, let us examine ourselves, God. And if we find that we're not, Lord, God, let us hunger today and thirst today, dear God. We know that you have much you have more, you have things that are better for us, oh God. Your plan for our life is, is greater than our plan, dear God. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, that we can fulfill the very promise that you, that you brought, that you want us to fulfill, dear God, the plans that you have for our life, God. You have plans for each and every one of us, oh God. And Father, let us not sell ourselves to the adversary and to his plan and to his way, dear God. 
Oh, God, we, we, I pray for every soul that's assembled here, every person who's viewing us, dear God. Father, that you would, God, that you would touch us right now, Lord. God, that you, that you would move on us right now, God. We know, Lord, it's what you want to do, is what you desire to do, dear God. So we surrender ourselves unto you, Lord, that you can have your way in us, oh God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way in us, God. We seek your kingdom and your righteousness now, Lord. We seek your face now, Lord. We seek to be obedient, Lord, now, God. God, let, let, let our cup overflow it onto our children, to our coworkers, God. God, let us be lights in dark places, oh God, in the name of Jesus. But, but God, let us not continue in the way that we are, Lord. God, whatever you have to do, Lord, whatever you have to do, God, we give you permission to do it, Lord. God, we pray that you would just do it, dear God, in our life, Lord. We know whatever you do is going to be right. You're, you're, everything you do is right, God. And so, God, we just boldly come and say, do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, oh God. Do it in our family, God. Do it in our hearts, oh God. Do it there, God, in the name of Jesus. Deliver us, oh God. Deliver us, God. We want to be delivered, God. We want to be set free, God. We want to be made whole, dear God, in the name of Jesus, I pray. God, I pray that's the prayer of the saints. I pray that's the heart of the saints, God, that we're not afraid of being delivered. We're not afraid of being set free. We're not afraid of walking with you, God. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Your way is right, God. Your way is perfect, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Your way is right, Lord. Your way is perfect. Have your way, Lord. No one loves us like you do, Lord. No one cares for us like you do. You are tender with us, oh God. You're very tender with us. We thank you, Lord. You know how to handle us. You know how to... You know what to do with us, God. You know what we have need of, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.